With Marty Baran, I'm Brian Duff. We're at KeyBank Center, and the Sabres have indeed used their eighth overall selection, and they have done so by targeting a scoring winger. Yes, one who produced 52 goals in 62 games. His name is Jack Quinn of the Ottawa 67s, a team that, when the hockey world hit pause, yep. was positioned number one in the Ontario Hockey League, and... Quinn is described in many ways, but I'm going to leave the door open for adjectives <laughs> from you, Marty, as we describe the player that Kevin Adams and his staff ultimately chose to go with tonight. Well, a pure sniper is what most of the experts are uh, calling Jack Quinn a really good shot. And from many different areas, he can find himself open in a slot on the left and the right. He has that great release, and sometimes he has that toe drag release where he changes the angle of the shot. And for me, as a goaltender, the guy that I feared the most when I played was the guy that can put the puck in the net. Well, Jack Quinn scored 52 last year. So that is the one guy. When he steps over the board, you know, I remember playing against Ovechkin or Ilya Kovalchuk, and those guys were shooter. They were snipers. And if I made a save, it hurt. And if I didn't get hurt, that's because it went into the net. So I think Jack Quinn may be a, a type of, of player that will be able to fill the net and fill the net often. And that's the guy I fear and that's the guy the Sabres love and that's who they picked at eight. Elite finisher, athletic, competitive. Uh, that from Jason Nightingale, uh, the director of analytics and obviously a big yep. part of this scouting process <clears throat> under Kevin Adams in his first draft. I think the one of the many things that is uh, interesting and exciting about Quinn, yes, he's now 19 already, having just turned in, uh, in September, but the year-over-year -year jump as he continued to mature on that team that had some incredible talent, and he improved by 40 goals. I mean, this yep. this is a massive jump, and it's also really reflective of what you were saying. This is not just a net front presence. In, in fact, anything but, because he's such an elite shooter, he's been able to find the lanes seemingly from different places. They're not just tap-ins, right? When right. you play with somebody and, and you sit on the back door, tapping. there's nothing wrong, <laughs> but when you evaluate a player and you say, well, there's somebody on the line that is feeding this player back door tap in for a couple of feet right. now there is some of those goals obviously in the season but when you look at the way Jack Quinn plays he finds the high slot he goes from the left side of the ice to the right side of the ice he can mm -hmm. shoot the puck as well from either side of the ice and some people say he's a right winger some people say he can play the left side mm -hmm. he can definitely um, you know um, get comfortable anywhere on the ice and that is a really key for him now the one thing that you just mentioned he's, he's an 01 birth year yeah. most of of those guys today and tomorrow getting drafted are O2s. He's an O1 because he was, I think, four days yep. after the September 15th uh, draft cutoff last season. Mm -hmm. So he has another year of development. Yeah. And his development curve right now is steep. It continues to climb. A lot of players... And for those that are, have been around youth hockey for a long time, you see guys that are peaking at Bantam, midget, mm -hmm. juniors, but their curve starts to plateau. Mm -hmm. And you got to be careful when you pick those players because you, you, you know that their development is over. With Jack Quinn, his development just keeps on going. Mm -hmm. He was projected to be a third rounder earlier this past year. Right. You know, and now he kept climbing, he kept climbing. And he kept loving the fact that his name kept climbing up the ranks and kept producing. So for me, that is an important point with Kevin Adams, Jeremiah Crow, the whole crew is looking at the development curve, knowing that it keeps going up, mm -hmm. that it's not at a plateau and nowhere near that yet. What do you think it means <clears throat> for an individual that makes the uh, ascension that he did year over year in goal scoring to be playing for a program like the Ottawa 67s, yeah. which has been legendary in Canadian Hockey League status, but in its current moment is the best in the Ontario Hockey League. The winning environment, how much is that helpful for a player of this age? It's always great. It's always great to look at players that have won, that it is at the junior level or a, a, an American League championship team or at least somebody that gets to the Calder Cup Finals. Listen, my second year in Rochester, we lost in the Calder Cup Final. We're looking way back at 98, 99, mm -hmm. but a lot of the players that I played with developed in that way. The year after... My first season with the Buffalo Sabres, the Rochester Americans went again mm -hmm. to the Calder Cup fi uh, Finals. Some of those players developed. And so finding winners, finding an organization that builds winners, um, and then being able to 
pick these guys up and put them in your organization and continue their development yeah. and use that those tools to have that winning pedigree in in your development is mm-hmm. extremely important. I think that is what Jack Quinn is bringing to the Buffalo Sabres and what people should expect from him as a guy that has been part of such a great franchise that is the Ottawa 67s. And look, a lot of people, I mean, the beauty of this draft uh, seemingly was beyond the top three, there was probably going to be significant variance perhaps on teams' lists and, um, you know, whether it was defense and nobody was sure just how early the defenseman would go uh, and or the wild card of a netminder. But when you were looking specifically in this Ottawa 67s team, you had Marco Rossi and you had Jack Quinn. And on any given day, you might want to put one ahead of the other. But the beauty is in tandem, they elevated each other's stock. And that's really what team play is all about, right? Like you're trying to make those around you better. And it's very fair to say that Quinn and Rossi did that. Oh, absolutely. <clears throat> Excuse me. Absolutely. When the, these guys played together, they fed one uh, off each other. They know scouts are in the building. They know people are watching them. Um, it just helps each other. I mean, we do the same thing, Duffer. <laughs> like, I know you're going to wear your top suit. I want to look good, too. That's what we do. But, uh, you know. It's been a while. <clears throat> but you, you think between Rossi and Quinn, listen, Quinn's got the 52 goals. Yeah. What the Sabres need One right now. One of two now, OHLers to do it this year. Yeah. Absolutely. Most goals by a prospect in this NHL draft. Yeah. You know, And I don't think anybody was over 50. He was the only one yeah. in the top prospects. So when you look at it, um, the Sabres need goals. Mm-hmm. I mean, there's a lot of different area of needs that the Sabres are looking at. And bringing in Eric Stahl was a a really big trade for the organization and for the uh, the way to set up the forwards, especially at yes. the center position. Eichel, Stahl, um, you may pencil in a Dylan Cousins or, or you know anybody you want there. But the fact that you need more goals up front as an organization moving forward. Obviously, Jack Quinn, I don't expect him to come in and, and score 30 goals. Right. And, and and we may be two, three years away from him coming over and playing pro now. Uh, but at that same time, you need goals. You need guys that can put the puck in the back of the net. Mm-hmm. That's how you win games. That's how teams elevate themselves to another level. And I think you can't look. Uh, away from a guy that has scored 52 in a season that will continue to put pucks in the net. Fourth time in the last eight drafts that Buffalo has picked in that eight spot uh, started back in 2013 with Ristolainen. You've had Nylander and Middlestat since and, and, and now Jack Quinn. <coughs> did you see uh, and just from what you had heard, did you did you feel like the, the draft kind of fell in an expected order based on what you thought Buffalo might be staring at? at as far as potential at number eight? Well, I did have four guys, and we talked about four players possibly being available. We talked about it on the instigators this morning. Cole Perfetti was one. Mm-hmm. Jack Quinn was another one. Alexander Holtz was picked right before that. Yep. I had thought Lucas Raymond may have been available at eight. Obviously, Detroit went ahead and yep. made a, a surprise pick at Fort with Lucas Raymond, and then you saw the two defensemen. Uh, you saw um, Jake Sanderson and Jamie Drysdale right there after that. So... I, I think we saw who was going to be available, and we talked about it, and they were ab- available. But obviously, a guy like Jack Quinn, mm-hmm. um, the Sabres, uh, you know, many experts thought that uh, that was something they were after, Some sure. somebody that interviewed well, that the Sabres really liked. Um, and, you know, you, know, you saw Cover Pron- Pronman, who we had mm-hmm. um, with our draft expert. He had Jack Quinn at number eight going to the Buffalo Sabres. So I think that the experts all saw that happening, and that follows suit here with the pick. Yeah, and and, I mean, again, obviously now an awful lot of time still to go within the draft. And, you know, if it follows according to the, you know, the script as it's laid out right now, the Sabres on day two would have picks 38, 100, 131, 191, and another one in in round number seven. Um, What are you getting as far as a sense from Kevin Adams here? And and now that this has happened, what are you anticipating might happen? Well, I think Kevin Adams was really excited about today. Mm-hmm. And we felt the excitement. Obviously, we're here uh, in the offices at uh, Key Bank Center. But, uh, you know, you could feel a buzz in the building. Maybe it's because we haven't been together in a few, a few months here. So we were right. excited to be here and be working together. But at the same time, this is important. It's building the future, mm-hmm. building your foundation. 
uh, you know, I worked with Kevin Adams with the Academy of Hockey, Jeremiah Crow, mm-hmm. and many of the uh, the staff now, and it was all about development, all about looking at at their the, the kids' potential and be able to give them the tools to get there. Mm-hmm. And so, what's better for development and potential than the draft? I think that's where everybody was excited. I think there's so many more picks in this draft that are going to be really good for the Buffalo Sabres. It's not because it's the second round, the third round, the fifth round that people should look at it and say, well, it's just a fifth round or probably won't play in the NHL. No, this staff here is looking at every pick in this draft as an opportunity for development and for a place later down the road to be here with the Buffalo Sabres. So it's not just because the first round, uh, the Sabres may not pick again in the first round. Who knows? Right. Something could happen. But if they don't pick again in the first round, the opportunity for development and get good players doesn't end tonight. It, there's still some more to do tomorrow. Well, we will stay in position just in case more happens tonight. That's the the beauty of being here in the arena and, and literally being next to the action. But you yep. mentioned Jeremiah Crow, and it's important because I think um, we should, you know, uh, let the our audience know how well you know uh, Jeremiah. And, and, and therefore, <coughs> when you think about what you've known about him as a person and as an eye for talent, what do you think it is about Jack Quinn that maybe stood out the most in the eyes of a Jeremiah Crow? Again, when I worked with Jeremiah, he always looked at where were they two years ago, three years ago? Where were they 18 months ago? Where Mm -hmm. are they now? And where will they be in 10, 12, 18 months, two, three years down the road? And that is what I think is is standing out from, from my perspective to the scouting staff and uh, the coaching staff and Kevin Adams, obviously, is the development. Is, you know, this this kid, Jack Quinn, didn't play AAA hockey at the highest of level when he was a young kid. He worked extremely hard to get to that point. Mm-hmm. And that sense of, uh, you know, having everything given to you when you're a kid, he doesn't have that. Right. He worked extremely hard for everything that was ever on his uh, on his roadmap for uh, for his hockey career. And that Which is actually important. wasn't a very long roadmap because he kind of stayed in the Ottawa Valley. <laughs> yes, exactly. And another thing too, so you know, you read about the kids and you want to know what they are. Yeah. So, you know, this Jack Quinn, he says, I didn't really work out until I was 15, 16 years old. Like, he's right. six foot. He's 180 pounds. He's still going to grow. He's still going to fill out. But then he started working out with Claude Giroux because Claude Giroux goes back to the Ottawa region this summer. Yeah. Uh, how amazing is that, that this prospect worked out with one of the greatest, you know, captain right now and one of the best player in the National Hockey League and learn from a guy like Claude Giroux at that young age. Yeah. Now you take that and you put the scoring ability of Jack Quinn and you have a total player right here and that's important. It, it absolutely <laughs> is and I, I just think that, um, you, you know, it's it's – it's now. It's it's the hurry up, but you have to wait, and like you just can't. You, you well, we re- have to wait because we, as <laughs> Gary Bettman, the commissioner, said before the draft, um, you know, they're looking at January first for a season, but we yeah. don't know what that's going to look like. We don't know, um, you know, what the development path in the in the short term mm-hmm. is going to be for Jack Quinn and where he's going to be and how that's all going to work out. But one thing we know is that the Sabers are going to work hard. Matt Ellis is going to get on the phone and talk to this kid and he's going to work with him right away and Mr. Bang On is going to be doing his magic. It's going to be fantastic. Last one for you, Marty, for now is um, as a guy who has gone through this and lived the first round experience, um, how much were you excited by, humbled by comparisons to current NHLers? Oh my God. And then when you hear some names in certain ways associated with Jack Quinn because of his best attributes. Do you want to say some of those names? Because I saw the well, same names <laughs> flashing on the screen, and I was like, wow, this, you know, David Pasternak David is Pasternak one of them. David Pasternak was definitely one that... Uh, and and, Nate and McKinnon was Nate, another one. Yeah, from, from some central scouting, uh, you know, there was... There Nate was McKinnon McKin- has more speed and, you know... But I think exp- that's the thing here that we might Nate be McKinnon- underselling. Like, the, the, there are some that really believe this guy is an absolutely dynamic skater too. So, but Nathan McKinnon wasn't the skater that he is now when he broke into the league. So it speaks to your point of what Jeremiah would look at and where is he, where has he been, and where can he get to. Where was his skating 18 months ago? Where right. is it now? Yeah. Where was his hockey IQ 18 months ago? Where is it now? Where is that curve? And that curve right now is 
climbing. And that's the key. And that's why I'm really excited about this guy. All right. Sounds good. Uh, obviously, uh, lots more coverage on Sabres.com and our social media platforms. And uh, we will be back with you soon.